first element is a actinide and the last element is a lauracium similarly the atomic number 91 which are having the three oxidation state that is plus 3 plus 4 and plus 5 so once it reacts with the acid it can give rise to the metal oxide once it reacts with the bases no reactions which has been observed hello my dear students a warm welcome you all myself is purnima lecturer in department of chemistry at vidyashram pre university college temple of excellence mysore my dear students in our last discussion we were dealing with a unit called d and f block elements under that we have discussed about the f block elements in that we have studied only the lanthanide series in that we have learned about the electronic configurations of lanthanides and atomic and ionic radii which is also known as what lanthanide contractions and also we have learned about the chemical properties of the lanthanides today we'll move on to the next topic of this unit by understand the actinides that is the introduction to the actinides and we are going to understand the electronic configurations of the actinides and how does this actinide series which also shows the oxidation state that we are going to understand and the physical and chemical reactivities of the actinide we are going to understand and finally we are going to understand the comparisons or the similarities between the lanthanides and actinides and lastly most important we are going to understand the differences between lanthanides and actinides and finally we are going to understand what are the applications of this f block elements okay so we'll see what are actinides already we have understood that in our periodic table there are certain elements which are also kept below in the periodic table and there is a set of 14 elements right which are known as lanthanide series and actinide series so already we have understood that which are the 14 elements which are belonging to the lanthanide similarly we are going to understand a set of 14 elements which are belonging to the actinide series okay so the actinides are also known as 5f series which include 14 elements from the thorium to lauracium from the element thorium to lauracium and it has a atomic number 90 to 103 so from the atomic number 90 to 103 we call it 14 elements as a 4f series or the lanthanide series the first element is a actinide and the last element is a lauracium okay next these elements of 4f subshells are gradually filled and these element constitute the second inner transition series so already we have understood that in the lanthanide series the last electrons will enter to the penultimate shell that is on the anti penultimate shell it has going to be filled but in case of this 5f series okay the last electron which also goes to the innermost penultimate shell so it is a innermost anti penultimate shell so that is why we write it is n minus why it is n minus 2 because it comes to the inner most shell okay the last electrons will go to the inner most anti penultimate shell then most of this elements that is the element beyond uranium are prepared synthetically in the laboratory through the nuclear reactions and the starting material for this purpose is always uranium hence this elements from the atomic number 93 to 103 are called as transition elements or uranides they are known as what uranides what does it mean because in the preparations of most of the element we use a element known as uranide which is having the atomic number 92 
So thus elements which is found in our inner transition series, hence it is also known as what? Uranoids. Okay. And all the elements in the actinide series are radioactive. So it shows us radioactive nature, hence they are known as what? Radioactive elements. Okay. Next, coming to the electronic configuration, we need to understand what is the general electronic configurations of actinide series. Already I told you that the electron, the last electrons will go to the innermost anti-penultimate shell. Hence the electronic configurations will be written as red on 5D, 1 to 14, 6S1, 6D1 and 7S2. You can see that the 5F series is the innermost anti-penultimate shell where the last electron which is going to be added up. Okay. This is a general electronic configurations of the actinide series. What is the general electronic configuration? Red on 5F, 1 to 14, 6D1 and 7S2. Okay. Next we have oxidation state. So, already I have explained that what is an oxidation state, why it is necessary to understand the oxidation states of this lanthanide and actinide series. Because as we have already understood that oxidation state which indicates the number of electron which is there in the outermost shell. Is it right? Which is nothing but a valency. Each element you know in the inner transition series, they shows variable oxidation state. Here also our actinide shows the variable oxidation state and the minimum oxidation state is plus 3. Okay. So the actinide exhibit the large range of oxidation state. This is due to the fact that the 5F and 6D and 7S shells are having comparable energy. Why it shows the variable oxidation state? Only because the 5F. 6D and 7S shells, you know, they have almost same energy. So that electron can jump from 6D to 7S or from 7S to 6D or from 6D to the 5F. That is why because of the small energy differences, you know, the electron can easily jump from the different shells and shows a different oxidation state. We will see that the 14 elements, how does it shows the oxidation state? You can see that these are the oxidation numbers of the each element. You can see that the first one that is actinium which shows a plus 3 oxidation state and you can see that thorium which is having the atomic number 90 which is having two oxidation state. One is plus 3, one is plus 4. Similarly, the atomic number 91 which are having the three oxidation state that is plus 3, plus 4 and plus 5. You can see that a uranium is also one of the element which is having atomic number 92 which shows 4 different oxidation state that is plus 3, plus 4, plus 5 and plus 6. Similarly, we have one more element with atomic number 93 which shows maximum oxidation state that is plus 7. Okay, And the minimum is plus 3. So, from plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6 and plus 7 is a maximum. Similarly, we have one more element which is having the atomic number 94 which are having the maximum oxidation state is plus 7 and the minimum oxidation state is plus 3. And the next element with the atomic number is 95, you can see that it shows plus 2 oxidation state. Is it right? So, plus 2 oxidation state, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5 and plus 6. Similarly, you can see that the atomic number 96 which shows only the two different oxidation state and you can see that atomic number 97 which shows again two oxidation state that is plus 3 and plus 4 and next is atomic number 98 which shows plus 2 oxidation state 99 again to 100 again to 101 that is plus 2 and plus 3, 102 is plus 2 and plus 3 and 104, 103 is 
plus 3. You can see from this table is almost all this actinide series of elements which shows plus 3 oxidation state which is the minimum oxidation state of this element and the maximum is plus 7. Okay. Next we have the physical and chemical property. Okay, so in the physical and the chemical property, we can clearly understand that the actinides are highly reactive when they are finally divided. You can see this reaction when actinides, if it is going to boil with the water, you know, it forms a actinide oxide that is a metal oxide with the formation of metal hydrate. Similarly, when the actinide react with the non-metal under the moderate temperature, it gives rise to the corresponding compounds. When actinides react with an acid, you know, it will form a metal oxide layer. Similarly, when an actinide react with a strong acid that is HNO3 which forms a metal oxide, when it is reacting with the bases, no reactions which is take place. So once it reacts with the acid, it can give rise to the metal oxide. Once it reacts with the bases, no reactions which has been observed. The metallic radii of the actinides are more comparable with that of the lanthanides when it is comes to the atomic radii which is almost similar. These are the some of the chemical properties of the actinide series. Next is similarity or the comparisons between lanthanides and actinides. Let us understand how these lanthanides and actinides are similar to one another. Both lanthanides and actinides they are belonging to the F block hence the F block which is also known as what inner transition series. They involve the filling up of five subshells of anti penultimate shell. Already have explained that why the last electrons will enter to the anti penultimate shell, which comes in a reverse direction. The last electrons which goes to the innermost orbital, hence it is known as what anti penultimate shell. And both can be represented with the same general electronic configuration. This is for actinides and this is for lanthanides. You can see that in lanthanides, the last electron which is going to be added to the anti penultimate shell, right? Here also in the actinide, you can see that the last electrons which goes innermost to that lanthanides. Hence, it is N minus 2, you have 1 to 14, here N minus 1, D 0 to 10 or 0 to 1, NS2, where for the lanthanide, N will be 6 and for the actinides, N is equal to 7. And in the atoms of the both of this series, the three outermost shells are partially filled while remaining shells are completely filled. You can see that the 5F, 6D and 7S, all these orbitals which are partially filled, which is going to be filled with the increase in atomic number. The remaining shells are completely filled. Is it right? Yes. And the elements of these series shows what? Plus 3 oxidation state. Just now I have explained with the octanides. Similarly, we have studied with the lanthanides also. Both of the series of these elements, they shows plus 3 as their oxidation state. That is one of the most important similarities. And the elements of both the series are electropositive in nature. Electropositive in the nature in the sense which can easily give rise to the electron. Thereby it gains a positive charge and they are reactive metals and act as very strong reducing agent. So when you say it is a very good strong reducing agent, when it is having a capacity to give rise to the electron. When the element has a capacity to give rise to the electron, which is said to be has a reducing agent because it loses electron and gains the positive charge. Okay. And in this series, atomic number will be increases and there is a decrease in a atomic as well as with a ionic radii. That is why as we move left to right in the periodic table, the oxidation number also going to be decreased, right? So that is mainly because of the increasing in a 
atomic number which causes a decrease in a atomic radius most of the cations of this series are colored and cations are having the same number of unpaired electrons are nearly have a same color once it loses its electrons you know most of this element shows a color the color is mainly because of the presence of what unpaired electron where does this unpaired electrons will come as we move left to right in a periodic table you can see that atomic number is going to be increased so that the last electrons which is going to be added to the anti penultimate shell so one by one it is going to be added so that the number of unpaired electrons is also get increased if number of unpaired electrons are increased you know automatically such compounds which also shows the color and in case of this series the nitrates and per chlorides and sulfides of the trivalent cations are soluble while the hydroxide carbonate and fluorides are insoluble and both of the lanthanides and actinides exhibit the ion exchange behavior these are the similarities between the lanthanides and actinides now let us understand the important differences between lanthanides and actinides so in your board exam most of the time they have asked this question to write the three differences between lanthanides and actinides so have a look on it lanthanide except promethium all the lanthanides you know they are non radioactive except promethium all the lanthanide series of the elements are non radioactive but in the actinide we have understood that almost all these elements are radioactive right they are radioactive in addition to the plus 3 oxidation state the lanthanide in some cases shows a plus 2 and plus 4 oxidation state in addition to the plus 3 oxidation state actinides can also shows plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 and plus 7 oxidation state and they do not form so oxo ions but in the actinide it forms a oxo ions such as uo2 plus and puo2 and u O O plus U O plus and U O two plus and these are ions are stable in acidic as well as in the aqueous solution. Which means to say that this oxo ion formations in the actinides are more and more as it is compared with the lanthanide series. And these oxides are hydroxides are less basic and oxides and hydroxides are more basic and they have a very low tendency to form a complex compound they have more tendency to form a complex compound as i have explained by taking in the chemical reaction and their paramagnetic in nature can be easily explained whereas in case of actinide already i told that these are the radioactive elements the presence of unpaired electrons which explain that they are paramagnetic in nature that cannot be easily explained because the absorbed values are usually do not tally with the expected value that is why we cannot expect the paramagnetic nature of the actinide series very easily and most of the lanthanide series they shows tri positive ions and they are colorless and most of this actinide series they shows tri positive and tetra positive ions and they are colored okay these are the differences between lanthanides and actinides lastly we have the applications of d and f block element so it is very important to understand where exactly we are using d and f block element already in the uses of the d block we have understood that we are using the d block element specially for the extractions of the metal and in the preparations of the alloy not only in the preparations in the industry especially in the iron industry for the preparation manufacturing of the iron we are using the d block element in addition to this we will understand more about the applications the iron and the steel most important construction material and their production is mainly based upon the 
formations of what? Iron oxide and removal of impurities and additions of carbon and alloying such metals such as chromium, manganese and a nickel. So, iron and steel, nowadays hope you know that it takes place a wide applications in the chemistry field, right? For that preparation and all, we need to use some of the elements as a catalyst. That catalyst again which comes under the D and F the elements. The titanium oxide which is also used in pigment industry, manganese oxide will be used in battery cell and also we can use a zinc, nickel or the cadmium and the elements of group 2 are coinage metal. They are known as what? Coinage metal. Vanadium pentoxide as we are very familiar which is also used as a catalyst for the oxidations of sulfur dioxide in the contact process. In the p-block element where you are going to understand vanadium pentoxide will be used as a catalyst for the oxidations of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide in the contact processes. And most important iron catalyst will be used in Haber's processes and titanium tetrachloride which is also forms a ziegler nutta catalyst okay and element which complexes which is mainly used in polymerizations of alkynes. So not only the nickel will be used as a catalyst in most of the reactions you know we use the nickel as one of the important catalysts to catalyze the reactions. From all these applications we can clearly understand that a D and F block elements it is very important as a chemist to understand more about the catalytic nature and formations of alloy and their formations of interstitial compound. So in the next class I am going to discuss with the new unit till that take care and be safe and we will continue with the next unit. Thank you.